So there you have it. Ken, he's a rational optimist. He's solving problems. He's attacking the solution. What's this Mark guy doing? He's an irrational pessimist. Doesn't solve anything. All he does is generate fear. Okay, I mean, I can kind of buy into that, but the Hawaii thing is a small scale. It's a one solution on an island. We're talking about a world with like 9 billion people that Elliot's going to live in. I just think there's some well, problems the that are too people big. that Elliot's going to live in is going to be satisfied as so the problems will be solved by rational optimists, not this pessimist crap that you've been hearing from this Mark guy. You take a guy like Peter Diamandis, a <laughs> rational optimist. Peter Diamandis. I was we, wondering when you'd bring him well, up. Well, you, you interviewed him. Peter Diamandis is impressive. Spend five minutes Googling him and you'll probably see why. Molecular biology degree from MIT, MD from Harvard, master's degree in aeronautics and astronautics. The guy writes amazing books and he hosts these technology events that my dad likes to attend. No filming the robots though. They took my phone! Peter is an optimist, just like my dad. To guys like this, the glass is far from smashed. People say, you know, it's not fair that in the United States and North America, people get to take these long showers and eat as much food as they want and use as much energy. We really need to be fair, which means we have to take our resources on the planet Earth and slice them up equally among all the people on Earth. And that mindset, that scarcity mindset, really pisses me off. Because the fact of the matter is, rather than taking a pie and slicing it up into smaller and smaller pieces, it's time to bake more pies. Oh, cool. What? All the old machinery here. Can we go film that? Can we uh, stop and get a few shots of that? Yeah, yeah, sure. We gotta be quick, though. I gotta get to the school. Okay, we can do that. So, Dad, what are we looking at here? Yeah, you're looking at a piece of agricultural history. This is a threshing machine. It's a precursor to a modern-day combine harvester, and your great-grandfather, and in fact, your grandfather, actually, I remember as a kid, they ran one of these for a little while, and this was all run by a steam engine, and then they'd bring the uh, the stooks or the grain in by hand, and they would uh, throw it in, and then it would thresh the grain, and out would come straw and, and grain. And I bet your farmers are happy they don't have to do that anymore. Hey? Oh my God, this was a lot of work. They had a big crews back then, and it's interesting, you know, there's so many people that think that this is the way agriculture should go again. In fact, so many people have never been on a farm, and and are telling farmers what they should be doing. Uh, you know, the whole anti-science, anti-GMO movement is all about people trying to preach to farmers in particular about how to farm without ever having been on a farm. And that's why I talk to kids, you know, because if you listen to the likes of Mark Sheehan and those, then the kids get a distorted message. And I think it's great to remember where we came back from, but this technology doesn't feed the world. Melodramatic, right? I thought so too until we got to the school and Rob asked the kids this question. Okay, here we go. How many of you think the world is getting worse every year? Okay. And how many of you think the world is getting better every year? All right, it's smaller, right? It's smaller, okay? All right. Let that sink in for a second. How many of you think the world is getting worse every year? The overwhelming majority of these junior high school aged kids already think we're going the wrong direction. That's what these kids are being taught about the world. And it gave me a headache. What am I gonna teach Elliot? Well, that was a blast. I sure enjoyed talking to those kids. They were great. Yeah, it was something. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Oh, parenting's gonna be hard. Uh, what do you mean? Well, like, I know, I know based on what we just saw, I can't, I can't be a pessimist and raise Elliot, but I'm having a really strong reaction to this whole rational optimism thing, and I can't figure out why it bugs me well, so much. Well, that's because I'm opening up your thinking, Nick. You've been living in a social media echo chamber that's largely negative, and I'm kind of stretching your brain into some new thoughts. Peter had a similar perspective. Your mindset matters, right? If you think the world is going to a hell in a handbasket, that's gonna be how you think about how you influence your children, where you invest, all of these things. I understand parenting is hard, but really if, if I felt the world was getting worse, I wouldn't have brought you into this world. And that would have been a bad thing because right now you and I wouldn't have been having this conversation and that would be sad. Yeah, and I, I have to say, I know that, I know my brain's doing some weird gymnastics because I'm having a hard time 
accepting all this, but I know somewhere in the back of my head I want to accept it or else I wouldn't have had Elliot and I wouldn't have had any hope for his future and I just don't know what's going on in my own brain. (laughs) I don't know what's going on in your brain either. But when it comes to this whole science thing, if you're willing to work with me, then I'll take you on a journey. We'll learn more about this whole thing of genetic engineering and GMOs together, okay? All right, let's see where this goes. Welcome to Learn GMO. Big difference within 